my dad was like my star. Like, I loved him. I would get up for years. He never came back. I didn't see him. I saw him one time, him and his new wife came and took me shopping for Christmas. And then I didn't really see him again until I was like 13. But I remember I would get up every morning really early thinking like I'd phone him and I'd get him and I couldn't get a hold of him. So like for me, it was like heartbreaking. Like I just didn't understand where my favorite person went. The man that my mom remarried um, is my little sister's father and the, the niece and nephew that I have in my care right now. I did get to know who he was and like his deepest heart and I saw him. He was super abused growing up. Like his stories are awful. And um, he did not want to be the person that came out, but I would imagine that he probably lives in a lot of chains and I wish that he wouldn't. I remember the first time um, Cliff was mean to me that I was sitting with him watching a hockey game and my brother came and showed me something and I didn't respond how he wanted me to respond. And he got so mad, he threw me um, and he just like screamed at me in this way that like nobody had ever done before. Like I just remember like the, the lump in the back of my throat and being so confused about this moment because I never saw anything like this before. I left home when I was 16 because of abuse. Um, and I just thought I anybody could do better than this. And I was so wrong. Um, I ended up like homeless. I, I'd break into apartment buildings to sleep in the stairways at night and like in the winter. I was in Prince George and I was living with a drug dealer and his brother was a pimp and a drug dealer and the girl was a prostitute and I was in that life and I was next. They were actively grooming me when God rescued me. All I knew was there is life is being poured into me and a drowning man will always grab that lifeline, right? So there was life somehow coming in and I was gonna take it. It was within just a few months I ended up pregnant. My mom phoned me and she said, you know, you have options and one of them is abortion. And I was like, <gasps> like I couldn't breathe. And, and then I became so strong that when Jerry was insisting that I was going to have an abortion, it was just a hard no. I, I'm probably gonna be stuck with you forever, but I'm not having an abortion. And he beat me so badly, I couldn't move for two weeks one time, but it was still a hard no. It was, you can't have that kind of strength unless the Spirit of God moves upon you. You can't. And I was like, well, this is like, I guess I'll take, I'm gonna take every beating. And I would just sit like this to make sure that the baby was safe. I didn't even believe that Jerry had beat me up, even though I knew he did. I thought, oh, I made that up for attention. That was the story, was every bad thing that happened to me, I've embellished, I've made it much worse than it is, I've dramatized it. And I went to bed and then God spoke to me again and he said, so Tina, he said like a series of things and you believed that, but it wasn't true. You're an adult and you can choose to keep that life, but you have a baby and you've been in this pain since you were small. Do you want to repeat that for your daughter? So I ended up living with my mom. Our relationship became amazing. So she said to me like immediately, she's like, well, I really want to go to church, but um, I don't like to go alone. I'm like, well, I'm just building a baby. So I might as well come. And I just instantly went to this place that was so full of love and warmth and kindness. And it was so healing. The pastor was amazing. He was from Oregon. He'd lived a hard life. His brother was um, a male prostitute. So he was he, like this tiny town and there's just this perfect pastor for me. And he became my counselor because he knew, he understood my stories. And he, there's nobody in the world that could have spoken to me the way he could. Cause he was like, yeah, like I know what's up. And he just, made me a student of healthy relationships. So I, one of my very best friends, Lisa, her mom, I was up at their property on the lake in Nelson and, and I was sleeping and her, Lisa's mom came over to me 
and she just started praying over me. And I woke up and I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> and I laid there and then, so I finally like kind of sat up and she's like, I just felt like God wanted me to just pray over you and pray for you to like get freedom and learn more about healthy relationships. And in, as this is happening, her husband walks over and he says hi to her. And, and she goes, oh, hi dear. And then he says, he just said, how are you doing? And she's like, I'm good. And then he kissed her and walked away. And I was like, what magic was that? I'm like, well, he is so nice to you. And she, she goes, what happened? <laughs> and then I told her and she said, that? She said, Tina, that's normal. That's just normal. And I was like, what? That's, I've never seen anything like that before. And I hadn't. And right at that time, God was like, I'm just putting you away for a while. And he just only exposed me to people that were living in really healthy relationship with him. So it's been for me a total like transitional journey of going from like emotionally always like really just being the cradle that people landed in to actually becoming this other person who is not, I'm not an emotional cradle for people. I'm truly not. Um, but also still knowing that God is still so good and everything, everything that he allows, he has a reason for it. Is God still good? Is God still sovereign? Is God still wise? And if those things are yes, and they're always yes, nothing else on this earth is gonna A, matter, or B, be good enough. And when you get there, you're free. You're free. And no matter how hard tomorrow is, you're free. He is our great reward. He told Abraham, right? He said, I, he didn't say, I'm coming with your reward. I have your reward in my hands. He said, do not fear. I will be your great reward. And that is always the truth. Being still is the hardest thing we can do. Just be still and watch because he is doing a great and wondrous thing that we could never conceive. And he's still doing it. He's never stopped doing it. So just be still and trust.